everybody, I'm Argolfumpf. This is the 2022 Mega Marathon! I'm playing a bunch of Nancy Drew games, including this one. This is the second Nancy Drew game, Stay Tuned for Danger. It's kind of hard to find this game, because it's old. I believe it came out in 1999. I actually don't know how to get the game to work without the actual CDs. I tried it just now, and it said, hey, Insert CD number one, or I'm not going to start the game. It's like holding my uh, computer hostage in that sense. I'm like, oh gosh, I, I don't know what to do. Anyway, um, luckily I had the CDs, so I can play this game. Uh, let's get started. It was interesting because earlier today I played the first game, and there were lots of people uh, in the live stream chat who had never seen the first game before. So hopefully this game will also be new to a lot of lot of people. Because, as I said, it's kind of hard to find the game. It was made last century. Dear Bess, you'll never guess who I'm visiting in New York. Maddie Jensen, your favorite soap star from Light of Our Love. Maddie is renting Aunt Eloise's apartment in New York. And after hearing about my last case, Secrets Can Kill, Maddie called to invite me up here. According to Maddie, Rick Arlen is getting death threats, but he won't go to the police. So she wants me to do some investigation work. Can you imagine anyone not liking Rick Arlen, daytime's cutest hunk? I have a sneaking suspicion, though, that there's more to this case than meets the eye. Call you later, Nancy. Okay, so daytime's cutest hunk is getting death threats. We need to save him. And it looks like we're going to Lexington Avenue. Come on in, Nancy. The door's open. Alrighty, so this is the house of Maddie Jensen. It's very fancy. And some of the artwork in this game, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of silly. What they, what they did is they just put the characters' faces on top of real-life people. And it's kind of fake and plasticky looking. But in the game's defense, hey, this was as best as they could do back in uh, 1999. So let's meet, let's meet our friend Maddie. Here she is. Welcome to New York, Nancy. I'm really glad you could come out here on such short notice. Alrighty, it's always great to be here to help other people. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Aunt Eloise told me that someone on the set is getting death threats. Well, for the past month, my co-star Rick Arlen has been getting these awful death threats. First, we all shrugged it off. You get the occasional odd letter in this business. But then they started to get weird. Have you ever gotten odd letters? Have you ever received an odd letter? Oh, I've gotten some odd ones here and there, but nothing like what Rick has been getting. In fact, they're totally bizarre. Not only did he get letters, but somebody sent him a box of poison chocolates, a broken watch, and then there's that whole thing with the teleprompter. Oh man, so like five things have already happened to Rick. Gosh, we we missed out on five sabotage incidents? I, I feel kind of bad now. I, I might have missed half the story. So what's, what's with this uh, teleprompter? So what happened with the teleprompter? Well, I was reading the teleprompter during a scene with Rick. All of a sudden, my lines read, You're going to die a horrible death, Rick. At the time, we all thought it was some sick joke, but nobody admitted to doing it. That is kind of weird. Did Rick go to the police? No, and that's the problem. No one is taking any of this seriously, especially Rick. He thinks nothing will ever hurt him. Someone sent him poison chocolates? Rick's a major chocoholic. His fans and friends are always sending him boxes of candy. These chocolates were so nasty, Rick spit them out. <laughs> I've never seen Rick say no to chocolate before. Tell me about the letters. Well, the first ones had the letters cut out of magazines, you know, like on a ransom note. They were all signed by someone named B.T. Kaiser. Somehow the news leaked out and the press totally jumped on them. Then they started getting ugly and twisted. Nancy, I'm running late. I need to get to the studio. Hey, why don't you come over and visit? I'll leave a visitor's pass for you at the security desk. Oh, before I forget, here's a copy of the house keys. 
I'm always losing my keys, so I've got plenty of copies. I'll write the studio's address on your map. Just catch a taxi cab outside and show them the map. They'll know how to get there. Alrighty! Okay, yeah, uh, we have multiple people in the comments saying they'd love to see a remastered version of the game. I totally agree, it would be great if they remastered this game. Because they did a remastered version of the first game, Secrets Can Kill. It'd be nice if we got Stay Tuned for Danger remastered. Let's see. Let's see if we can find more of those pictures, because I know there's like these pictures everywhere. Ah, Chatter Magazine. Yeah, these are the pictures. Check out all of those pictures of Rick. Amazing. But there are rumors he might be leaving the soap opera in order to become a movie star. Rick. Rick, that's never gonna work. Oh, that 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 would honestly never work. How do I back away? Ah, that's something that's not working. How do I back away from this? Okay, I click on the left-hand side. Well, that's kind of weird. Yeah, some of the controls in these older games are not, like, super intuitive. All right, take a look at this photo. Like I said, they clearly just copy-pasted the characters' heads onto real bodies. <laughs> Uh, same with this one. And the heads don't exactly match. Like, this guy is way, way more buff than Dwayne Powers can ever hope to be. Sorry, Dwayne! Sorry, Dwayne! But you are not TV's hottest hunk. This, this one actually kind of matches. His face kind of matches that body. That face does not match the body. And, and I don't know what that face is at all. I think those are just real people. All right, so, uh, let's see. I don't think we have anything really to, to pick up here. It's just fun to explore this area. So somebody's asking, what is a soap opera? A soap opera is a type of TV show, usually about an hour long, which runs during the daytime. Usually, uh, has, they have a bunch of romance storylines and ridiculous storylines, and they try to come out with, like, a new episode every single day. Now, there are, there are, like, nighttime soap operas, but those tend to be, like, higher quality productions because they're not forced to do an episode every single day. Aha! TV remote, yes. So, will Celeste ever forgive Alex? Here's what to expect from TV's hottest couple. Okay, a long road to fame. This is Maddie Jensen talking about how much she's gotten help from her mother. We're gonna get messages from her mother. I'm not exactly sure, like, her mom is a suspect, but the game does have things from her mother complaining, hey, how come she's not more famous? She should be more famous. She's totally the star of the show, not this Rick guy. So I guess we could assume that her mother, who never appears, is the culprit, but no, no, it can't be the case. Her mother's not... <laughs> Her mother doesn't appear, like I said. All right, and then here are, uh, I think these are the uh, people that helped make the game. And then Maddie's just hiding in the background there. Oh yeah, well, here we go. We've got a letter from her mother, yes. Uh, I'm writing this letter because uh, you never call me. You can't be that busy not to phone your poor mother, can you? I saw your photo in Soap Opera Journal. Why didn't you send me a copy? Huh? How come your picture's so much smaller than Rick's? What makes him more important than you? Look, you're the real star of this show. It's about time we show the world you are number one. I will not allow you to ever play second fiddle to that man. Without your talent, he'd be nothing. Remember that. And remember the person who paid for all your acting lessons for all three years. Mother. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Real inspiring message for mom. We're just gonna go through all of Maddie's uh, personal mail. Why not? And the daytime soap opera gala. Yay! Woo! I think there are only like two soap operas still in existence. Isn't it General Hospital, Days of Our Lives? Some of them, some of them aren't around anymore. Okay, so that's it for Maddie's house. Let's go here. 
and Worldwide Broadcasting is here. It's right next to the park. Taxi! Where can I take you today, miss? 1999 Broadway, please. Alrighty, here we are. So, um... It's not... This is like a really, really big lobby place. Really big lobby. Oh, they have giant posters of all the various people who, uh... Our TV stars here, I guess. We got Star Magazine. If you don't see this, there might be something missing. Uh-oh. So somebody... I mean, uh, I believe the culprit cut these letters out of uh, this, new, this magazine to send that threatening message. But it's weird that the culprit would use just a magazine in the middle of the lobby... You know, did anybody see the culprit just cutting out the letters from the magazine? Seems like it'd be weird. Because if the culprit didn't do it right there, then the culprit took the magazine, cut out all the letters, and then put it back. Which is also weird. And this is kind of unfair. We've got all these places which we will not visit. None of these places will be visited in this... In this well, we'll visit the props department. And then that's it. None of those places will be visited in this game. The, the game's kind of teasing me. You can meet Rick Arlen in person. Star of Light of Our Love. Wow, five daytime awards. Best leading actor. Best on-screen romance. Nice. I do like the lobby music. It is very nice. Can I help you? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Nancy Drew. Yes, Maddie Jensen left a visitor's pass for me. It should be listed under Nancy Drew. Here you are. You'll need to sign for it. Okay, you need to come to this good. desk every time you enter so I can log you in. Every single time you gotta you gotta you gotta sign yourself in. Alright. Have a nice day. Sounds good. So this is the founder of the network, Mildred Strathorn. I believe what we're supposed to do is talk to Maddie. I don't care who he is. No one breaks a contract with Bill Pappas. I'll kill him before he runs out on me. <laughs> Angry producer. Wish we got to see him. See, if they did like a remastered version of this game, I'd like to meet some of these characters. Like the mother. Maddie's mother and uh, William Pappas. They, 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 it'd be cool to meet those characters. But anyway, <clears throat> I believe we're supposed to meet Maddie right now. It's open. Hey, Nancy. Glad you could make it. We'll be shooting soon, so I only have a couple of minutes to chat. I do find it interesting that we start the game by talking to Maddie, and then the next thing we have to do is talk to Maddie. We really need to talk to her a lot here at the start of the game. So, well, what do you know about this Rick guy? Can you tell me more about Rick? Hmm, where should I start? Well, I've known Rick since I started acting. Well, after I got my big break with the touring production of Romeo and Juliet. We both played the leads. I guess it gave us good practice for the parts of Rory and Serena. Can you tell me why someone would want to send these threats to Rick? He's talented, handsome, and rich. Some people would hate him just for that. But Rick wouldn't hurt a fly. I have no idea why someone's trying to scare him with these threats. Yes, but how long have you been dating him? That's the most important thing here. Love drama. So how long have you been a couple? You mean off screen or on screen? You see, Rick and I dated when we were with the touring company for Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, you just said that. That's why I asked about it. Don't you remember? Uh, what, what, whatever, whatever. Do you think an old flame of yours could be motivated by jealousy to do this to Rick? Actually, Rick and I are no longer dating. But come to think of it, I do know someone who could be jealous enough of Rick to do something like this. Yuri Danner, Rick's twin brother. I'm sorry, Nancy. It's been a running joke around here. You see, Rick's character has an evil twin, Yuri, and everyone's been saying that it's him who's causing all this trouble. But seriously, I have no idea who could be behind this. Oh, look at the time. I've got to get to makeup. Hey, why don't you come down to the set in a few minutes? I'll be shooting a scene with Rick. In the meantime, make yourself at home. And again, she just runs out on me. Okay, thanks. Now we get to explore her, her room. Th the game kind of emphasizes uh, exploration, which is it's kind of cool. Ma chérie, voici un symbole de moi. You are an angel and boy that you sent... 
I think it's my my beloved. You are here is a symbol of my love for you. You are an angel sent from heaven, poor Ming, in order to encourage me, in order to give me courage. You, I love you, and I very much embarrass your mother. I think that's what it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but um, as I was gonna say, I, I have. You know, because I have the actual CDs, the game box does say, Whoa, this game has a hundred different areas that you can zoom in on. Like, this is an area we can zoom in on. There's like a hundred of them. And, um, you know, there's pluses and minuses to that. One of the, one of the minuses is that, well, we've got a lot of the areas we can zoom in on, but they're not really super useful. Like, we can zoom in on the makeup. Not really useful at all. Okay, but that does count as a zoom in spot. One of 100. Ooh, here's another one. Mm, yeah, I want some food now. I'm hungry. Yep. How do I back away? Back away, back away, back away. Here's the makeup. Yeah. All sorts of makeup and perfume. Crazy times. It would be cool if we did more with that evil twin brother storyline. I think that would be funny and hilarious. I would like it a lot. Maddie Jensen, and we have words on the outside a mask of sweet sincerity a cloak of loving kindness meant to sway a heart to trust and fill the eyes with blindness which is not a very lovey dovey thing to write is it no alrighty then I don't think Rick is here no he's not here he's not here no no I'm not leaving I'm I'm turning around and checking out the scene that they are recording. Everybody, we're gonna love it. You wanna see what a soap opera is like? We are gonna see this soap opera with its amazing acting. Places, everyone. Are we locked in? Yes, Miss Wise. We're clear to shoot. Have we blocked this already? Yes, I think. Quiet on the set. Is the floor ready? Check. Audio. Uh, check. Roll tape. Stand by camera one. Stand by music. Take camera one. Rory, I have to talk to you. I don't want to see you, Serena. No, Rory, don't go. I love you. I don't want to see you, Serena. <coughs> Sheesh! What was that? I could have been killed! Get my agent on the phone, now! No, Rory, oh, don't out, go! For today. I don't want to see you, Serena. Best acting ever. I can see why they won multiple awards. Rory, I have to talk to you. I don't want to see you, Serena. Rory, don't go. Your time is running out, Rick Arlen. You'd better kiss your career and your life goodbye, because the end is near! <laughs> Ah, and this is a puzzle I seem to remember. I'm missing, we're missing the clock hand. I should set the clock. So we can't actually solve the puzzle yet. Oh, darn. Yeah. A weird zoom in. Yeah, we, we get to look at the teapot from a slightly different angle. Alrighty then. How do I get out of here? Oh, here we go. We've got a couple of areas we can explore. Like, here's the blocking for the scene. They're they're practicing it well. We need a key to open I need up. to find the key for this. We need the key to open up this. The wheel is stuck. That will open up this wheel, so we get to go upstairs and find out what's going on with that falling Klieg light. I almost fell on Rick. And I know I can hang out in this area back here. Why Why am I not able to do so? Yeah! 
one problem with this game, you've gotta get them memorized. You've gotta, like, memorize where you're supposed to go. Or, like, where the arrows are. I mean... Ah, here we go. Because there aren't any arrows. It's all just your red magnifying glass. So it, it doesn't always work. You, you can get a little lost. I'm getting lost here, clearly. And I know I need to steal this particular screwdriver. Because I am a thief. No, really. I don't know why the other screwdrivers are boring. But that that is the one screwdriver I need. There's a, a box. And up there is a locked room. Here is an axe with a fire alarm. Where's the fire? You must be the one behind all these shenanigans. Uh-oh. Come with me, young lady. I believe the police would like a word with you. Oh, 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 no. What happened? They've confiscated my pass. I guess this takes me off the case permanently. Oh, I should have been more careful. Well, better luck next time. I just hope they'll be a next time for Rick. Jeez, game over scene, huh? Wow. So, wait, does this mean I get sent all the way back to the start of this area? Oh no, I, like, I lost my screwdriver and everything. Can I help you? Yes, Maddie Jensen left a visitor's pass for me. It should be listed under Nancy Drew. Here you are. You'll need to sign for it. Okay, we get to do everything every all so over again. In. Hooray! Yay! Have a nice day. Well, let's do it again. We're, we're going to talk to Maddie. I don't care who he is. No one breaks a contract with Bill Pappas. I'll kill him before he runs out on me. Yeah, so now we get to see that amazing acting scene a second time. It's open! Hey, Nancy. Glad you could make it. We'll be shooting soon, so I only have a couple of minutes to chat. Can you tell me more about Rick? Hmm, where should I start? Well, I've known Rick since I started acting. Well, after I got my big break with the touring production of Romeo and Juliet. We both played the leads. I guess it gave us good practice for the parts of Rory and Serena. So how long have you been a couple? You mean off-screen or on-screen? You see, Rick and I dated when we were with the touring company for Romeo and Juliet. Do you think an old flame of yours could be motivated by jealousy to do this to Rick? Actually, Rick and I are no longer dating. But come to think of it, I do know someone who could be jealous enough of Rick to do something like this. Yuri Danner, Rick's twin brother. I'm sorry, Nancy. It's been a running joke around here. You see, Rick's character has an evil twin, Yuri, and everyone's been saying that it's him who's causing all this trouble. But seriously, I have no idea who could be behind this. Oh, look at the time. I've got to get to makeup. Hey, why don't you come down to the set in a few minutes? I'll be shooting a scene with Rick. In the meantime, make yourself at home. All right, Yuri, Yuri, Yuri Danner. Very dangerous man. Okay, so let's just watch the acting again. Hooray, acting, acting, acting. Where am I? Oh, I'm standing right in front of this thingy. Okay, let's go. I need something to make this work. Places, everyone. Are we locked in? Yes, Miss Weiss, we're clear to shoot. Have we blocked this already? Yes, I think. Quiet on the set. Is the floor ready? Check. Audio. Uh, check. Roll tape. Stand by camera one. Stand by music. Take camera one. Rory, I have to talk to you. I don't want to see you, Serena. No, Rory, don't go. I love you. I don't want to see you, Serena. What was that? I could have been killed! Get my agent on the phone, now! And there we go, there we have it. Looks like that's a wrap for today. Stage crew, you're on standby. So let's get that screwdriver. And this time, I will not pull the fire alarm. I will just walk over to these locked doors and see that they are locked. Well. How do I get to those locked doors? I go here, and then I turn, and then I go up. Yes, obviously that's how these locked doors work. It's locked. It's locked? It's locked. It's locked. All right. Go down these stairs. Vacuum door override. Cool. 
Anyway, I think we can talk to uh, the various characters here. What kind of studio are you running here? My client could have been killed. I told you I'd get to the bottom of this. I've already closed the set to visitors. Ah, that's Dwayne Powers. The agent will meet him later. He's complaining. What? <laughs> My client could have been killed. It's open. Oh, Nancy, this is horrible. There's no way that could have been an accident. I think it's another attempt to get Rick. The timing's just too weird. All of these threats, and now he's almost killed on stage. I'm too upset to deal with this. I gotta get out of here. I need some space. We'll talk later. And again, she just kind of abandons us and leaves the area. Come on, Maddie. Come on, Maddie. Why do you hate me so much? Why must you always run away from me? Why can't you just hang out with me? We could be friends. Oh well. I think we might be able to meet Rick. Entrez-vous. Hello. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? Okay, is he talking to me or is he talking to his reflection in the mirror? I love how he, he knows somebody's at the door, but he still takes five seconds to check out his hair. And then he starts the conversation. Well, Rick, you seem to be doing well, considering you almost died. Well, for a guy who just barely escaped a terrible accident, you're in an incredibly good mood. Of course, of course I am. I was lucky. If you're gonna be in an accident, that's the best way to be. Don't you agree? But then I've always been a lucky guy. I just met you, Miss Drew. Alrighty, but... Are you sure it's just an accident? Do you really think it was just an accident? I see Maddie's been talking to you about me. Of course it was just an accident. Things like this just happen. This is like the fifth time somebody's tried to murder you, Rick. Is it lucky to receive death threats and poison chocolates? Poison chocolates? <laughs> oh dear, Maddie's really gone over the top with this. They were just a bad batch, that's all. Look, if you dare me, I'll eat one. But if we're gonna play that game, I'd prefer another dare. So, how about it, Nancy? Truth or dare? What should I pick? Truth or dare? I'll let you guys in the live stream chat figure that out. I do love Rick's eyebrows. They are just amazing going up and down. They're amazing. And it looks like the first person, we've got dare, 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 truth, dare, truth, dare. 500 dares and three truths. Dare! Okay, while I go to makeup, stay here, get all cozy, and stay beautiful. That's not much of a dare! Oh! Well, dare we have it. Rick just goes away. Just like Maddie. This is why he and Maddie should date each other. They're clearly, they're clearly great at running out on me. That's why they were such a good couple. The publicity stunts. A silly name for a band. Rick, you think I'm stupid? I know where your boat is. You can't escape my wrath. I'm closer than you might think. So yeah, this is actually kind of interesting because we get to see the various death threats that were made against Rick. Mmm, chocolate. Yum. Yes, these are the chocolates. Ooh, chocolates. I wonder how Rick eats chocolate all the time, but he still stays in such great shape. Here's a mean poem about how many ways I hate you. Looks like Rick is a fan of golfing, too. Dead flowers. Dead flowers, oh no. Why does he even keep this stuff out in the open where anyone can find it? Scared you, huh? Good, because this was just a dress rehearsal. Only my revenge will be truly sweet, Rick Arlen, so prepare for your bitter end. Arrgh. Let's see, we want uh, a couple of them. Wow, he's got signed photographs of himself. I should get one of those. I bet my friends would like that. Ooh, he's got money, too. Might, might as well just take the money. Right, Nancy? You, you, you need the money, right? If you weren't, if you won't be mine, you won't be anybody's. Hmm. 
I'm tracking your every move. Watch out, I'm right behind you, BT Kaiser. Leave light of our love, or else, BT Kaiser. And yes, as you can tell, um, some of the notes were cut out from magazines, but the other notes, they all seem to be typewritten, right? I'm gonna get you, Rick. Your days as Roy Danner are numbered. All those typewritten ones didn't have uh, names attached, right? Like this one? And this is just creepy. This is said a fanatic, and oh man. Yeah, that, that person is clearly just following him. He has won Man of the Year award? Really? This guy? How? And, and, yep. Oh, his character wasn't dead. Oh, man. La 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 la. Okay. So next what we're going to do is we are going to leave. We're not going to leave. We're going to meet the other people involved. We've got two people on this side of the building. It's open! Hello there! Oh, are you a visitor? According to the policy's memo dated July 14th, 1954, no one is permitted in the prop room. Except for those people permitted in the prop room. You may want to talk to the director, Lillian Weiss, if you want to become permitted. She likes to do all of the hiring around here. Good day, my dear. We've got a couple of people in the in the live stream chat saying Rick is a lot like Gilderoy Lockhart from the Harry Potter books. He he shows up most in uh, book number two, Chamber of Secrets. And yes, yes, Rick does in fact act a lot like Gilderoy Lockhart. He is very obsessed with himself, thinks he's handsome, and that's basically the only thing he cares about is himself. May I help you? Hi, Miss Director! Hi! Okay, so hi, I'm Nancy Drew. Yes, hi, I'm a friend of Maddie's, and I'm- Do I look like a tour guide? Look, the set's closed to visitors. I'll need to take your pass away. But if it's any consolation, I'll be more than happy to show you the door. Oh! She stole my pass and she showed me the door. Hey, Lillian, I've got something I want to show you. My butt! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there's nothing for us to do now. Let's just go home and leave like a sad person. Can I help you? No, thank you. Just looking. I really do like Lily, and I wish she appeared more in this game. Well, let's go back to Maddie's. Hey, taxi! Where to, lady? 7226 Lexington Avenue, please. On my way! It's locked. Oh, I've got her keys, though. Oh, yeah, and Nancy's friends. I really like how Nancy's friends are a lot more involved in this game compared to the previous game, where it was basically useless calling her friends. But in this game, you can call her friends, and they are great, especially her boyfriend, Ned. He sounds cute! Woohoohoohoo! Let's hear what he sounds like. I want to hear what Mr. Cute sounds like. Hello? Guess who? Nancy! First you leave me to visit your aunt in Florida, and now you're in New York. By the time you get back to River Heights, I'll be an old man. I'll hurry back to you. But first, I've got another case to solve. So, Hannah told me about the investigation you're working on. Sounds neat, but kind of dangerous. I Anything I can help you out with? I don't know. Does he sound cute or not? I'm not entirely sure. Well, let's let's uh, let's talk to him about this. Guess what? I gotta look at the letters Rick has been getting. Some of them have the letters cut out of magazines, and some of them are typewritten. But get this: the Y is dropped on the typewritten letters. Hmm, sounds like two different M.O.s. But what a clue! Now if you can only find the typewriter that drops its Y. So, what else can I help you out with? Well, I finally met Rick Arland, and he is just kinda terrible. I finally met THE Rick Arland. 
That man has an ego the size of Texas. He's worse than Daryl Gray. I'm not sure I like you jet-setting across the country meeting all of these Enrico Suaves. So, are these threats he's been getting serious? Yes, and he's not only getting letters, but tainted chocolates, broken watches. Have you tried to find out where these objects are coming from? That might lead you to your culprit. So, what else can I help you out with? I think that's it for now. Thanks, Ned. I think that's it for now. I miss you. I miss you too. Goodbye. I kind of like the Ned in this game. This is his only appearance. We're never going to hear from this Ned again. But I I think he's perfectly fine. He's, he's, he's an okay Ned. Hi, Nancy. I'm sorry for skipping out on you like that. I guess I'm not a very good hostess. It's just that this whole thing with Rick really shook me up. It's okay, that was only the third time you ran out on me. Alright, well the studio kind of kicked me out, so what do I do? I just ran into Lillian, and she kicked me out of the studio. Yeah, Lillian's pretty cranky these days. Wait a minute, I've got an idea on how you can get back into the studio. You know, my agent could get you a job as an extra so you could get on the set. You don't have to do anything, they just need to have people standing by. Cool! This is kind of amazing, and I wish the game sort of followed up on this, because Nancy does get a job as an extra, but she doesn't have to act in any scenes or, or, or stuff like that. I kind of wish there was like a puzzle where Nancy got to be an extra on the set of the, the soap opera, and we got to see more amazing acting. Like, the puzzle could have been, remember the, the blocking scene where it showed here's the direction that the maid is supposed to go in? What if that's the puzzle? Nancy has to navigate the scene and just go through the scene at the right time to the right spots. That could be cool. That sounds great, but what should I say if they ask about you and me? Just tell them you're an aspiring actress who I've taken under my wing. I'll give Dwayne a call first thing tomorrow. Just stop by there in the morning. I'll tell him you're an old family friend who's decided to try out acting as a career. Aw, thanks. Would you do that? That'd help me get past Lillian and hopefully to the bottom of these threats against Rick. Yeah, I should get back to learning my lines for tomorrow. Good luck. And then she walks out on me for the fourth time. Maddie, Maddie, you have a problem. Quit running away. Do, do I just have like terrible, do I smell terrible? Is that the reason she keeps running away? I was hoping to find you here. I've been making myself right at home, love. I see you found my personal diary. Well, yeah. Y you left it out on the table for all the world to see. What was I supposed to do? Well, you could have shown a, a little respect for my privacy and left it alone. You know me better than that. Your business is my business babe interesting soap opera um, lines okay I was trying to do terrible acting there I don't know if I did it as terribly as I could have well let's go get Nancy a job with Dwayne Powers taxi yeah what's the address 318 West 10th Street please you got it it's locked Alrighty, so who do we call? Dwayne Powers, who is somewhere... Ah, here! Go away! Don't you understand? Mr. Powers, Maddie Jensen sent me to see you. About a job as an extra? I'm sorry. I'm in Suite 101. Come in. Yeah, that sound effect just hurts my ears, definitely. So the question is with that scene, was that really the nice guy or was it the evil twin? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I bet it was the evil twin. He was kind of gross in that scene. Dwayne Powers. Okay, let's meet Dwayne. Come in. I apologize for my abrupt greeting. You must understand that if I opened my door to every struggling actor in this town, I'd never be able to get my work done. It's okay, Dwayne. It's okay. I'm a friend of Maddie Jensen. She told me you might be able to get me a job as an extra on Light of Our Love. Ah, yes. Maddie just called me. You're Nancy Drew, am I correct? 
Maddie spoke highly of your abilities, and I am more than happy to give a young actor a chance, if I can. Normally, I don't do this, but seeing that you're a friend of Maddie's, I could pull some strings for you. You see, Worldwide uses me almost exclusively for hiring their talent. Not only did I provide them with Maddie Jensen, but Rick Arlen as well. Whoa! You're Rick Arlen's agent? Yes, I was. But I must confess that the man has no talent. Were it not for his good looks and charm, he'd never have gotten to where he is now. You see, Rick foolishly believes acting is a status symbol, not an art form. He's a ladder climber who'll use anyone to crawl his way to the top. A ladder he's sure to fall from one of these days. Well, Nancy, you must be anxious to start this assignment. I'll call right now and have a pass waiting for you at the reception desk. Now, if you'll please excuse me, I must get back to work. It was a pleasure meeting you. Please call on me for any other needs you may have. Um, hi, how's it going? Okay, you can you can go look for your jammies. What what key? Yes, yes, I have some keys for opening the door. Yes. Sorry, that's 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 my daughter. Do you want to talk to everybody? You you find your jammies and then talk to everybody. I'm um Okay, we were supposed to do the laundry today, weren't we? But we didn't do the laundry, and now I've just got baskets of laundry on the floor. <laughs> and uh yeah. You want to say goodbye to everybody? Come here, come here, come here. You can, you can, here, you can head. Do you want to listen to the music for a while? Want to do some live stream talking? Taxi! Where can I take you today, miss? 1999 Broadway, please. Okay, so what should I do now? Go inside. Okay, go inside. So should I uh, talk to this guy? Yeah. Can I help you? Hi, I've been hired as an extra by the Powers Agency. Here you are. You'll need to sign for it. You'll need to come to this desk every time you enter so I can log you in. Should I sign down or no? Yes. Thank you and uh, good luck. Cool. So should I talk to my friend or should I talk to the mean lady? The friend. Okay, you think the friend is nicer? No way, the mean lady. Y you think the mean lady is nicer than my friend? No, let's do the nice lady, the good, the good lady. Okay, well, let's see the mean lady. Ah, I see Maddie's friend is now working as an extra for us. So, are you trying to get discovered, or are you just hard up for a job? I'm working with Dwayne Powers' agency. I heard he's a really good agent. Oh, please. Don't get your hopes up too high. It's not like you're working for commercial artists or Edison talent. We use Dwayne whenever we need someone right away. Usually extras or gophers. If we really need talent, we call someone else. Okay, so what did you say? Normally if you need talent, you call someone else. Oh, hey, that's exactly what you said. Well, we don't want to talk to her because she's kind of mean, so we'll just say goodbye. Is that okay? No? Yes. Yes. Well, I'll let you get back to your business. Goodbye. Want to keep going and talk to the nice friend or no? Nice friend. All right, let's find this nice friend. She is actually. I think we could actually maybe. Go it's open. Yes, my dear. Hi. How can I enter the prop room? I see. Well, I don't just let anyone enter my prop room without showing me that they're clever enough to take on the responsibility. Listen to my riddle, and when you know the correct answer, I'll let you in. Give it air, and it will live. Give it water, and it will die. Uh, what's the answer to this riddle? Okay, so what needs air but not water? Fire! Somebody said fire! Very good! Let's see if you can answer. answer one more. What has teeth but can't eat? What has teeth but can't eat, Rosie? Okay, um, I think it's a cone. Or, or is it a piano? Let's go with piano. Nope! Try again! What has teeth? But oh, can't eat. Not a piano. Oh, that was pretty easy. 
Let's try another one. What has a head and tail, but no body? What about this one? What has a head and a tail, but no body? I think it's a penny. Maybe? A coin. No, a cheeseburger. My, what nice penmanship. Uh, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. What has a head and okay. tail, but Never. no body? That's it. Yes. I have stumped many people with my riddles, but you are quite the sleuth. You may go and enter the prop room now, while I go and unpowder my nose. <laughs> okay, want to say goodbye? Goodbye. All right, see you later. That's a fun character. Oh, don't forget, don't forget this. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to my nice friend next. But I, I was going to search this room first, if that's okay. Okay, can you shut the door, please? Yeah. Yeah, we never see her again after this, I don't think. I don't think we see her again after this, which makes me sad. I wish we had more of her. I do like those puzzles that she gave us. I believe the puzzles change depending on which difficulty setting you have. So, you know, if you're a master detective, you get the hardest puzzles. This is kind of cool. This is a prop room. It's just got all sorts of props and stuff. I think the important thing we're looking for... I think we've got three important things here. It's funny how, you know, I haven't played this game in a while. I haven't played it since 2020, but... So I haven't played it for two years. I still remember the stuff we have to do in this game. So one of them is grab the bolt cutters under here. And then one of them is checking out this thing. It's got a puzzle for us. And then another thing is checking out the typewriter. That's it. Okay, so this is the tower puzzle. Let's see if we can do this. This isn't so tough. We have, uh, I, I mean, this this puzzle appears in lots of different video games. It's called the Tower of Hanoi Puzzle. Come on, to the center, and then to the right. And then, let's see, I need to build a, a three, yeah, I need to build the three thing on the left so I can build the four thing, if that makes sense. So I'm building a three stack here on the left. That lets me move number four. Number four, I put number four on five. And then I can just build a three stack on number five pretty easily like this. Come on, you can do it. Gave us the clock key. Hooray! Woohoo! Move the rings. Oh, this explains the rules to the puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, Castle Malloy has a version of that puzzle, but it's kind of terrible in that game. And all these doorknobs. Who needs that many doorknobs? I don't know. Why would anybody need that many doorknobs? This area especially, it is so cool looking, but it is especially made up of things that you can zoom in on. And there's not much of a point. That's a... I mean, this is a... Crossword puzzle. So wrath, watch, threat, maybe? Ooh, is this the time? Is this the time for the puzzle? Like, four o'clock? Is that the solution to that one puzzle? Maybe? Maybe not. So the log book. This is definitely a puzzle. Um, letter, number, puzzle. There's an email about this. So uh, this is important. The culprit stole these things. Well, the culprit stole, stole most of these things. Some of these things. The fake beard and moustache. So that is definitely a, a culprit theft thing. I thought there was... Okay, the typewriter this? drops its Y. 
Alright, so this is the typewriter that the culprit must have used to write those threatening messages. Hmm, some of these letters have different colors. C-A-R-E, care, T-H-I-K. Rick? Maybe Rick. Maybe Rick. Hate Rick! Hate Rick! Oh no! Oh no! Somebody wrote hate Rick over and over and over again. I could have sworn there was like a piece of paper or, or something here that I pull aside to get her, her top secret passcode. Here. So this is her computer uh, logon information. Millie, WWB 1958. So that was, I mean, that's kind of hard for people to notice, actually. It's a very well-hidden clue. This is locked. Well, let's check out some of this stuff. Oh, hey, look, it's, uh, it's a Nintendo DS, I think. Wow. It's a fire department thing. U.S. mail. Dear Miss Strathorn, would you like to donate stuff? Really? Donate stuff, yeah! It's funny that Miss Strathorn, she's the lady who owns this place, you know, she founded the network, and they have her hiding in the proper room all day long. Like, what? Come on, she deserves a little bit more respect than that. And she's following an old memo from 1954. She, she is very obsessive about this prop room. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a typewriter in real life outside of, you know, like stores, like old antique stores. I have heard somebody use a typewriter in real life. One of my uh, professors in college did I that. I need something to make this work. I don't know why the professor felt like using a typewriter instead of a computer that day, but whatever. So we need to uh, set it. It was four, right? Well, it's not four. Let's try five. I should set the clock. Yeah, but what time? Well, this is fun. We get to try every number until we figure it out. Somebody says 11. We've got two people saying 11 o'clock is the answer. Wow, lots of people saying 11 o'clock. Yeah, wow. All right. Yep, I did not learn to type on a typewriter. I learned to type on a computer. And let's see, that gave me the key. Okay, the key, the key to the mystery. Actually, it's the key to this thing. Aw, oh, man, we can't solve this puzzle until we turn on the light. And in order to turn on the light, we have to come here at night time. Yeah, we have to come here at night time. But in order to come here at night time, we need to figure out the password. So I think we're going to try talking to these characters here. Just make sure we it's talk open. to everyone. Just make sure we talk to everyone, that's all. Hi, Nancy. Glad to see Dwayne could get you a job as an extra. Who knows, maybe you'll be the next Serena Livingston. As if. I'm lucky if I can remember my stage left from my stage right. Dwayne was very helpful. I can't believe he got me a part, just like that. Dwayne's a great guy. He gave me a chance when no one in this town would even give me the time of day. I don't think Dwayne likes Rick very much. Actually, the feeling's mutual. Dwayne was Rick's agent and helped him get the part of Rory Danner. But later on, Rick ditched him to go with a larger agency. I guess to help him get out of his contract here. 
Yeah, there's also sort of a, a love triangle. I believe I believe the book goes into like a love triangle because both Dwayne and Rick love her. They love Maddie so desperately. And that's just so dramatic. Well, I'll see you later, Maddie. Yeah, I should get back to learning my lines for tomorrow. Good luck. She doesn't run away, but she does slam the door in my face, which is not very nice. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for talking, Maddie. Yeah, I kind of wish the game played up that, that love drama angle a bit more. Just, just kind of. That's just me. Oh, well. Looks like Rick is not here. I doubt Lillian's going to be here to talk to me. It's you again. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry for bothering you. I'll leave right away. You do that. You do that? I'm mean. Let's just go outside. Let's just leave. I can take the talent exit because I am talented now. Hey, taxi! Where to, lady? 7226 Lexington Avenue, please. On my way! Alrighty. Ah, here's where we get the package. I know some people got really stuck on this part of the game because you need to check out this tape, which is kind of silly. <laughs> but hey, it's a tape from Hannah. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, hold on a second. I need to turn on the TV first and then watch the tape. We're here on the set at Worldwide Broadcasting Studios with soap heartthrob Rick Allen. The studios are abuzz with talk that you may be heading for a career in films. Will Rory Danner be killed off the show? Rory is a character who is dear to my heart. I never put him in a life-threatening situation. I'll leave that to the writers. Well, how could anyone in their right mind leave such a gorgeous co-star, Maddie Jensen? Is it true that your on-stage love affair has led to an off-stage romance? Only my hairdresser knows for sure. Weren't you seen with that actress Greta Von Kamloops at Cannes earlier this year? Any chance you may be starring in a film with her in the near future? Oh no, not while I'm with the WWB Network. Our sources say that you've been a victim of a stalker, is that true? Well, yes, in a sense. I feel like I'm being watched at every moment, and always at the same time. Weekdays from 2 to 3 on Channel 13. Oh, Rick. Yeah, Hannah wanted us to watch that. Thanks, Hannah. Fantastic. That was great. I'm really glad I got to see that. Definitely a very important thing for me to uh, check out. All right, we haven't gotten a letter yet. Best said to call. Um, I'm going to leave or maybe skip ahead a day. Let's do that. Because we can go to nighttime now. Whoa. Yeah. can sneak around at night. Taxi! Where can I take you today, miss? 1999 Broadway, please. I can't really go inside, it's right? It's locked. It, it's locked. Hey, taxi! Where to, lady? 7226 Lexington Avenue, please. On my way! It's locked. So now let's go uh, upstairs in the daytime. And yeah, let's call Nancy's friend, Bess. Best Marvin. I can't come to the phone right now, but please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You sent me a message telling me to call, and then you're not there when I call you. What's up, Bess? I think maybe we need to go see Rick. Taxi! Where can I take you today, miss? 1999 Broadway, please. Alrighty then, we're gonna go over here and uh, sign in. Can I help you? Hello, here's my pass. Hello, Ms. Drew. Thank you. You may proceed. 
All right, so Rick is right next to Maddie Jensen. She lives over here. We've already met Rick before. Hello? That's it, right. So watching the tape triggers this scene with Rick. Uh-oh. Die, Rick! And a, uh, a cassette tape that says, Play me! So threatening message saying somewhere in the room there's a bomb you need to you need to use the screwdriver to unscrew the lid and then you need to cut the wires in the correct order Orange Not orange! Not orange! Not orange. Hello? Hello, Rick. Did you get my last warning? Somewhere in this room is an explosive device. Hello, Rick. Don't try to hide the room. Door's lined. The cover is on too tight. So I don't know what those words are. Those are those words or just sounds? So it's not orange. Let's go with blue. Well, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is great. Hello. That will blow to smithereens. I heard smithereens. Okay, let's go with yellow, red, yellow, red, orange, blue. Got it. Yellow, red, orange, blue. It was pretty scary for a minute there. And then what happened? Once I defused the bomb and got out of there, I called the police and I was stuck at the station for hours. They searched the dressing room and sent the bomb off to the crime lab, but they didn't find anything. Oh, and remind me to thank Chief McGinnis when I get back home. He vouched for me when I asked for a copy of the tape. It sounds like things have gotten way out of control. Oh, Ned, I've got another call. It's probably the police. I love you, and I promise I'll be careful. Call you later, okay? Okay. Hello, Ms. Drew. This is Bill Pappas, the producer for Light of Our Love. I just wanted to thank you for your quick thinking and valiant efforts today. I understand that you've been detained at the police department. Someone brings up a good point. Whenever you restart the puzzle, you restart outside of the room. I'm not sure why that's the case, because that means I have to do all four of the screws over and over and over again. I mean, it doesn't take that long, but still, it would be faster if they just restarted you at the puzzle. So, uh, yes, Mr. Papas, I did talk to the police. Yes, I was. They needed a statement from me. What type of information? information about the bomb and what I found in the dressing room. Can I ask who has access to Mr. Arlen's dressing room? Only Rick and the security personnel. We've already checked into this. Rick is very touchy about his room and won't even let the janitors clean it unless he's there. Wow, really? That's odd. Has he always been this way? Yes, Rick's very controlling like that. It took us weeks to renegotiate his contract. He had all of these detailed demands. Like about lighting, script direction, the placement of his name in the credits. He's unbearable at times. Listen, I need to get back to work. Do you need anything else? I've got a lot of things I want to talk to you here about. This is the only time we get to have a phone conversation with Mr. Papas. So, yeah, let's see. Do you have surveillance video, maybe? Do you have surveillance video of the hallways, perhaps? We're looking into that. Listen, 
We run a studio down here, not a prison. Sometimes staffers borrow the security videos when they run out. We've addressed this problem before, and I can guarantee it won't happen again. Hold on a second. No, tell him I'll call him. Don't put him on hold, I'll call him. What else do you need, Nancy? Hello? Someone said this is a, a save on animation character. Maybe they did originally intend to have this be a character you talk to face to face, but they, they weren't able to finish it in time, and so it's just this one phone call. Can you think of anyone on the staff who has skills in explosives or electronics? We definitely do not use explosives on our set. We use outside pyrotechnicians for location shoots. And of course, all of our technical crew are very knowledgeable about electronics. But I couldn't picture any of them making a bomb. Is there anyone on the technical staff that would hold a grudge against Rick? Look, I'm not the studio psychologist. Rick's not the easiest guy to work with, neither am I. But then, I don't have people leaving me threatening letters in my office. Do you believe someone from outside the studio could have done this? That's impossible. This set has been closed down tight since that accident. I even hired extra security. My own mother couldn't have gotten in here. Are there many people who have access to the studio at night? Only our key talent and some of the floor managers have access. And of course, myself and Lillian. But we've often got projects going on around the clock. Post-production work and set design to name a few. Can I have a list of everyone who's been in the studio at night? That's confidential. Do you have surveillance video of the hallways, perhaps? We're looking into that. Listen, we run a studio Didn't down here, not a prison. Didn't you just ask this, Nancy? Sometimes staffers borrow the security videos when they run out. We've addressed this problem before, and I can guarantee it won't happen again. Hold on a second. No, tell him I'll call him. Don't put him on hold, I'll call him. What else do you need, Nancy? Hello? Who takes care of the teleprompter? Well, in theory, it's the lead scriptwriter's job to manage that part of production. But a lot of actors, especially Maddie, like to edit their script to add emphasis or direction. Is Ms. Strathorn the lead scriptwriter? No, not at all. She's always submitting scripts and story ideas to our writers, but they never go anywhere. Does the studio have any audio mixing equipment? Of course we do. We have a whole department set up for audio recording. And we also have some mixers in the control room. Do you think I can see them sometime? We're very busy with production right now, and we're no longer conducting tours. If you... Oh, hold on. No! Get someone else for that. We need to have someone on standby if he decides to leave. Sorry about that, Nancy. Any other questions? Who else has access to the staff offices? The usual people. Janitors, some assistants, Millie, security. Now, is there anything else you need to ask of me? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Okay, I think we've talked to you about everything, sir. Well, thank you for your help in this matter, Mr. Pappas. Goodbye. Yes, well, thanks again for your brave efforts today. Goodbye. Thanks again for your brave efforts today. All right, so because of that scene, we get this message, which says the code to go inside at nighttime is 3689. And hey, it's by the guy we were just talking to, Bill Pappas. So 3689 would be the code. Let's go inside at night time. Taxi! Where can I take you today, miss? 1999 Broadway, please. We're going through the side entrance or the back entrance. Nice. Yes, the talent entrance. I need something to make this work. I think we just use the card to bust our way inside here. And has nothing changed? Nothing here is different? Oh, wow. Soap opera mania. How does he do it? Well, he's a maniac. Maniac! All these soap opera magazines. Amnesia for, uh, Serena? Again? That's a lot, a lot of amnesia. Oh, miraculous recovery, though. Oh, looks like Rick got married on that episode. Oh, my. Oh, my. Alrighty. I don't know where I am now. I am near the talent exit. I think Maddie's script, she has a script here, and I think this script tells us how to defuse the bomb. It's yellow. 
how I change pages. Yellow, red, orange, and blue, okay? So that's how we knew which wires to clip. I wonder why the clue is here inside this room, though. Very mysterious. Very mysterious, I'd say. Alrighty. I need something to make this work. We can go back into the prop room using this. Using the doorknob. Nothing's changed in the pop in the prop room though. So there's really no reason to, to do that. Yeah. And Lillian's room is here. No, Lillian's room is this one. Got it. Okay, so we're here in her room. Now we're just gonna explore. Let's see, what's there this? There seems to be something written on it. What's this note? So price the chocolates. Fantastic. It's November, huh? November. All right. She visits her anger support group regularly. That's good to hear. The computer logon was Millie WWB 1958. So we're going to print this report. I think we're going to get a code, unless I'm mistaken. Like, I think Nancy is trying to get something. Uh, I mean, these are emails. Rick is just terrible. He's terrible. We need to discuss him. He's terrible. He's terrible. Missing props. We need to find the beard and moustache. Ratings. Oh, no. The ratings are... are oh, no. Nope. Ratings are terrible. Poor, poor ratings. Uh, here we go. The control room is actor. That's the that's the one we're looking for. And we can look up employee IDs if we have any employee IDs. And internet, obviously, there's no internet here. Why would there be internet here? That's just silly. Alrighty, then let's check out. Is there anything we can look at here? No. Let's see this report. So these are all the events that happened to Rick. There's like 10 different events. My goodness, Rick. People keep trying to attack you. Yes, obviously this obviously this this billion dollar studio cannot afford to buy a fake mustache. They need to find one. It's lost. They need to find it again. All right, something over here, perhaps, in the trash. Oh, man, looks like Lillian wrote this threatening message. My goodness. I don't think we can pick up anything here. Unless it's this. It's rubber cement. A wonderful adhesive. Yes, definitely. A bitter hoax tainted with hate is a secret revenge from a previous date. I'm just reading the uh, words in italics. It's a puzzle. Her interactive makes mystery games. Mystery games. Ha 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 ha. All right. That's a lot of episodes. Definitely a lot of episodes. A spell of the unknown, new threat, unknown, aggression, new threat, menace, monster, 
Just threatening words that are underlined here. I know I'm supposed to look at the thing behind it. Let's see if I can find it. There seems to be something written on it. I need a red thing to look through this. Yes. Hmm. Where are the red glasses? I think the red glasses might be in Rick's room, maybe? That's what my brain is telling me, but my brain could be wrong. Let's go back to Rick's room. See if we can find these red glasses. I think it's in a drawer. There we go, 3D glasses, yay. The Hamptons, me and my gal. I just love boating. That's what I love to do. He's a big fan of showboating, I suppose. Okay, I back away, then I go over here. And I'm gonna use the glasses here. Here we go. And that's how we figure out what these uh, signs are. We, we, we got the password actor, right? That was the password for the upstairs area. So let's get actor. Let's go upstairs and check it out. I need something to make this work. Let's see, we're going up these stairs. Actor is... Let's see. Woohoo! That's how we get inside this room. So I think we've got a tape or something of the sort. This is just random sound effects. Cool sound effect board. <laughs> Why would they need that sound effect here? This is this is a soap opera. How many soap operas have storylines about aliens attacking? Light reveals what hidden in the darkness, but much first you must give the power of light. I think what we do is we turn on the light here. Got it. That will give power to the area down below. Here we go. Use the key on it. This shows us the solution to the puzzle, which is 214. So I think it's two, four. How can I move the second one? Here, okay. No, it's three, two, four, three, two, four. That's it. And it's loud. It's loud. So thanks the to that, we can... The wheel is stuck. The wheel is stuck. We're supposed to be able to go upstairs. Hmm. Alrighty, then I guess we need to find an item to be able to go upstairs. I I could be wrong about that upstairs stuff. Maybe that just powers this area here. I mean, that along with the clock, I think you have to solve the clock puzzle as well to trigger this. Woohoo! Secret underground room. Check it out, secret area. So, Owen Spader, that would be the, uh, I think that's the culprit's code. 
So we need to know the ID number. And that's it. We're gonna look up the ID number on the computer. I do like this cool secret passageway. It's neat. I don't know why we need a secret passageway to the props room. But it's fun nonetheless. All right, we're gonna turn around. Leave. Go to Lillian's, which is over here. And look that up on the computer. So it was Millie WWB 1958. And then um, the employee, that is not the employee ID. The employee ID. This one, okay. 31867-2001. 31867-2001. It looks like Owen was on the set every time something happened to Rick. Yes, and Owen belongs to uh, the Dwayne Powers Agency. So that tells us something crazy might be going on there. Well, we're gonna go to Dwayne Powers' area right now. I think that's the clue we need to break into Dwayne's area. We could have probably broken into Dwayne's area earlier, but we'll, we'll do it now. Ooh, somebody said the prop room has the oil can that I need. All right, that makes sense. Taxi! Yeah, what's the address? 318 West 10th Street, please. You got it. Let's see, I think to sneak in, we need to just call a random person. Not today, thank you. Yes. We don't want any. It's about time you showed up. I've been waiting 45 minutes for that pizza. All right. The angry pizza guy lets us in. I need something to make this work. Again, I'm just gonna use my uh, little credit card thing to smack, smack the door and get my way inside. Look at all these actors he has. They're great, great actors. I know he's got some sort of fancy number here. Okay, four three seven six six three. Yeah, that's the number for his, his thing. And yes, definitely he is in love with Maddie. He, he's got this photo of her and him in the wallet together. Dwayne clearly loves Maddie. I wish we could talk to him about how much he loves Maddie. Alas, we cannot. Newspaper reading up on Rick, even though he claims to hate Rick. Okay, that's random. He visits the Angry Man. The Angry Man. Sounds like a great play. Alright, are one of these books? Okay, this is a French dictionary. So maybe that lovely letter from French, or written in French, was written by this guy. Maybe Dwayne did leave a lovely French message for Maddie. So, so romantic. Oh, and Joan Jensen, that's Maddie's mother. Hey, read this article. Why was my daughter not invited to this event? She should have been invited to this. It is very important. Yeah. Here's a resume for somebody. Um, you can call me. Hey, it's Dwayne's number. I think that allows us to call Dwayne now that we know the number. I need to find the key for this. Oh, okay. I think the key might be in the, the briefcase here, maybe. We do have a lot of drawers that we can pull open. And oh my gosh, he's got designs for how to build a bomb. Oh no! And we can't call any of these phone numbers. They're all sort of fake. 
Alrighty. And then this is a message. It looks like a secret message. Can I open up this? Yes. He's got the adhesive spirit gum. He's got plane tickets. A $35 plane ticket to Rio de Janeiro. Wow. It only costs $35 to go all the way to South America from New York. That is amazing. I know this game was made in 1999, but those prices are just always amazing me. It's just, wow. Even though this is, this is another secret message. It's got to be even though revenge should be sweet, jealous acts will end in defeat. Oh, wow. That's a good fortune cookie. Wouldn't it be weird to call Nancy's friends from here? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just call George. We haven't talked to George yet, right? Let's just talk to George from here. Please hang up and try your call again. Please hang up. This is a recording. Wow, okay, fine. Never mind then. So, what was the... Let's read this. Final notice. Our attorneys, um, our attorneys are angry at you. You, you owe us money. Give us money, buddy. Where's my money? Don't, don't make me send my very angry attorney to punch you in the face. Four, three, seven, seven. And then the other side is six, six, three something. Six, six, three, zero, it looks like. They're the keys. And we need to look at everything here. So bank accounts. He has very little money. I think that's it. Hmm, Subway, yummy. Just getting some uh, sub sandwiches. You gotta be very careful about where you click on this area, okay. So final notice, you're 120 days past due. Our lawyers are gonna attack you. And you you owe us money too, 10 days. 10 days, we'll, we'll, we'll get you out. And Maddie Jensen loaned him $5,000. Maybe that will cover his money. Yeah. I think that's it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we've got these keys. I'll use them to open up that, this thing. I need to find the key for this. So Rick Arlen's files. Rick Arlen, this is what he's done. Oh, he's actually been in a movie before. Just a student film, but still. And canceled. Doesn't work for me anymore. It's very sad. Wow, he wants $350,000 a year? Jeez. Owen Spader. We have a number. We can't call him. I love he's on Bamboozle Drive. Hmm. Wow, that seems suspicious. Seems very suspicious, in fact. Looks like he's just done all this freelance work. Read this third piece of paper. I don't think we can. Let's see Maddie's file. Everybody likes her. She's got lots of experience. All sorts of skills. Elizabethan drama, dialects, acrobats, gymnastics, stage fighting, firearms, skin diving, kickboxing, ninja throwing stars, good with children and animals, kite flying, and lizard wrangling. All important things to put on your resume. Let's 
see, Nancy Drew is in here as well. Have Nancy fill this out ASAP. Nancy's filled out none of these forms. Okay. I need to find the key for this. Well, huh, I, I thought that would give us like more interesting uh, information, but I don't think it did. Huh. Well, what do we do now? Perhaps we need to call Dwayne or go home or something like that. Hey, taxi! Where to, lady? 7226 Lexington Avenue, please. On my way! That's so where my key is at. Here are my keys. Ah, yes. Okay, so we've triggered this scene for Nancy Drew. It sounds like a bomb. It's sort of a joke, but not really. This is your final warning, Nancy Drew. You better mind your own business and go back to your little life in River Heights. I mean it. Leave town now, or next time you won't be so lucky. Dun, 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 dun. Creepy. Creepy. Let's go to daytime now. I think maybe we can visit Rick again, unless I'm mistaken. Can we call Dwayne? Oh, I, we can call him, but I don't remember his phone number, and it's not here on the list of phone numbers. So, yeah. Let's just go to the studio. Taxi! Where can I take you today, miss? 1999 Broadway, please. Can I help you? Hello, here's my pass. Hello, Ms. Drew. Thank you. You may proceed. Okay, people are saying Dwayne's phone number is on the map. Yeah, that's helpful. Sorry. Well, well, well. I see our local hero has shown up for work. Not only can she waste everyone's time with prying questions, but she can find the time to save Rick from being blown to smithereens. Why are you so angry about me saving the life of your star? Well, can you tell me something about Owen Spader? No, I can't tell you something about Owen Spader. Why should I? It's none of your business. Well, I'll let you get back to your business. Buh bye bye Buh bye Buh bye 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 Talk to the various characters here, and uh, then try to call Rick. I mean, Dwayne. It's open! Nancy, I'm so glad that you're okay. Everyone's been talking about that bomb scare. Rick's still shrugging it off, but I can tell he's upset about it. Tell me, do you know someone by the name of Owen Spader? No, that doesn't ring a bell. Wait, no. No, I'm pretty good at names, but I've never heard of him. Oh, well, thank you very much, Maddie. Well, I'll see you later, Maddie. Be careful, okay, Nancy? Entrez-vous. My hero, Nancy Drew. You know, according to ancient tradition, if someone saves your life, you should serve them for the rest of your life. So, what can I do for you, young lady? Your wish is my command. I'm really not that young, Rick. Right, I forgot. You're celebrating your 70th birthday next month? Oh, <laughs> you are so sassy. But that's what I love about you. Sassy. Oh, I love you too, Rick. Especially your eyebrows. Tell me, Rick, do you know a guy by the name of Owen Spader? Yeah, yeah, I know Owen. He was with the, uh, Beekman Theater, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's kind of short and stocky. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you're seeing him. <laughs> don't break my heart, love. What is the story with the prop master? Old Millie Strathorn! Heir to the worldwide broadcasting fortune. She's great, except for the fact that she's never liked me. She thinks I'm too big for my britches, and that I wouldn't know a good thing if it came up to me and stuck its finger in my nose. Alrighty then. <laughs> I love his impersonation of her. That's the best acting I've seen from him throughout this entire game. Can I ask your advice? Dwayne Powers is my agent. 
He's pretty good, isn't he? Dwayne's a loser, babe. Don't tell me he's representing you. Is that so bad? He represents Maddie. Yeah, and that's a problem. Maddie hangs on to Dwayne like my Aunt Mimi hangs on to cats and old newspapers. Listen, I gotta go, Rick. Be careful, okay? Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella. Yes, yes. Alrighty, let's head on out of here. That is not how we head on out of here. Where is the exit? Exit, exit, exit. Here we go. So Dwayne's phone number is 2900. Taxi! Right. Yeah, I think I can this. remember that. West 10th Street, please. You got it. But maybe we can talk to him face to face. <coughs> or not. Okay, just phone calls. Hey, taxi! Where to, lady? 7226 Lexington Avenue, please. On my way! It's locked. There we go. Powers Agency. How may I help you? Hi, Mr. Powers. It's Nancy Drew. Ah, Ms. Drew. Maddie told me all about the bomb you defused. What a stroke of luck you were passing by. With Rick's dressing room right next to Maddie's, she could have gotten killed. Wow, there's a lot we can talk to him about. Let's talk to him about everything. I think Rick was in more danger than Maddie. It's clear to me that he's setting this whole thing up to generate publicity for his grand entrance into the film world. My only fear is that some poor bystander like Maddie will get hurt. That's a pretty harsh statement. Show business is a very harsh world, Ms. Drew. Look at me. I've studied every aspect of acting, the classics, dialects, stage combat, everything. I was underrated and underappreciated, but brilliant. And yet a phony like Rick Arlen is a success, and here I am, a talent agent. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I still harbor regrets about not pursuing my acting career further. My only point is that Rick has every reason to fake these so-called threats against himself. He has yet to suffer any harm from them, but the publicity and attention has served him well. Yeah, Dwayne definitely seems very bitter about not being an actor. Have you met the prop master at Worldwide? She seems rather strange. Yes, I've met Millie once or twice. She's very eccentric. Actually owns a studio, but chooses to stay locked up in that prop room of hers. Rumor has it that she's trying to write Rick Arlen out of the show. I'm afraid that I'm not making a very good impression on Lillian. She doesn't seem to like me very much. I don't see why she would. Lillian is very professional, though I think she doesn't care for Maddie very much. Why doesn't she like Maddie? I'm not sure, but without a doubt, it has something to do with Rick. He enjoys creating trouble. How does he enjoy creating trouble? When I worked with Rick at the Belfry, he was always playing off of people's weaknesses, starting rumors and fights. He always seemed to prey on the most gullible people. Do you have many employees working for you at Worldwide? Only two, you and Maddie. Oh, yes, and a temporary stagehand. It's been difficult finding adequate talent these days. Do you know where I can find this stagehand? I haven't seen him around. I'm not sure when he's scheduled to work next. What do you make of these threats against Rick? Maddie's very concerned about them. I don't believe them. Rick was always known for his odd sense of humor and practical jokes. Unfortunately, Maddie always fell for them, just like she's doing now. Well, what about the producer who's always yelling? The producer seems pretty upset lately. He's always yelling. Oh, he's just blowing off steam. Rick's recent threats about leaving the show have put an undue amount of pressure on him. Upper management seems to fear that the ratings will fall if Rick leaves. Although I really can't picture that since Maddie is the real star of Light of Our Love. Well, I should get back to the set. Thanks for your help. Thank you for checking in with me. I'd like to know how things are working out at Worldwide. Dwayne really should know when, when his 
employees working there. He's only got like three employees. All right, we forgot to pick up the videotape, which is supposed to be at uh, the upstairs area Taxi. in World where I broadcast. I must have gotten distracted by something. Broadway, please. So let's let's go there and get that tape. Can I help you? Hello, here's my pass. Hello, Ms. Drew. Thank you. You may proceed. It's an important tape, yes. And we can see if we can talk to Millie about anything. It's open! Why, hello! I hear you've become quite the celebrity, saving Rory Dunner from those diabolical traps set by that cold-blooded scoundrel, Yuri. Thank goodness you had my wire cutters, else you would have been blown all the way to Bakersfield. Don't you mean Rick Arlen? And who is Yuri? No, I mean Rory Danner, young lady. Yuri is Rory's evil twin. He's always trying to bump off Rory. With his brother out of the way, Yuri thinks he'll have a clear shot at Serena. I've been trying to help him ever since Rory showed up in Jackson's Wharf. That Rory Danner needs to be taught a lesson. She seems to think all the soap opera characters are real. Okay. Do you know where I can find Owen Spader? He's a stagehand, I believe. Good luck finding him. I've yet to meet him face to face, even though he signs out props all of the time. It must be wonderful to work with Rick Arlen. Is he really that exciting in real life as he is on stage? Who? Rick Arlen? I've never heard of him. You don't mean Rory Danner, do you, dear? He is a no-good, good-for-nothing, do-nothing, if you ask me. Oh, he's been a troublemaker ever since he's got here. What that man needs is a good, swift kick and a you-know-what, causing poor Serena all that grief with his scampering around. I should get back to the set. Goodbye. Have a good day. All right. So, that was a conversation with her. I don't think we could talk to Lillian about anything new. It's you again. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry for bothering you. I'll leave right away. You do that. Do that. I, I, I will do that. Then, yeah. I need something to make this work. So let's go to the upstairs area. Let's see if we can do it. It's locked. So the passcode was actor. Was there a tape inside here I that I just missed? I need to find the key for this. No, no tape inside here. All right, so let's see. We've got like hundreds of tapes in here. But this is the one tape we need to watch. Excellent, we found the one tape. Sorry about that, I saw, I, I'm sorry. I missed that earlier. And I don't think there are any other big things to do. I think this should be like one of the last major things hey, we taxi. do before we Where get to the end lady? of the game. 7226 Lexington Avenue, please. On my way. Excellent. I need something to make this work. It's our buddy Owen Spader, right? You can see him with the beard and the moustache. Sneaking around, looking weird, <laughs> walking so, so funny. And then wait, who's that? Dwayne Powers. Owen Spader is Dwayne Powers? Dun 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 dun! So Dwayne shows up at the studio in disguise and sneaks around. How creepy! And once we watch that tape, we get this phone call, which leads to the end of the game. Hello? I don't have much time to explain. Can you meet me at the studio later tonight? I know you won't have any trouble getting in. 
And there we go. Should we try calling George? I'll call George one time. Just to hear what George sounds like in this game. Hello? Hi, it's me! Hi! You're not How George! You? You're you're not George at all. Uh, this case is getting stranger by Whoops. a minute. Now I found out that the prop master has a typewriter. And you know what? The Ys on her machine are dropped. That is strange. But remember, this is just circumstantial evidence. It might not be the prop master who's typing these letters. So, what else can I help you out with? I think that's it for now. I miss you. I miss you too. Goodbye. So at the end of the game, we do get to accuse... Let me back away. We do get to accuse one of the suspects of being the culprit. Uh, make your choices now for who I should accuse as the culprit of the game. Fane residence! Hi, George. It's Nancy. Nancy, how are you? Are you still in Florida? Did you ever solve that case you were working on? That case is solved. You're not gonna believe this, but I'm now in New York on another case. Wow. From the palm trees of Florida to the streets of New York City, Nancy Drew is on the case. What is it this time? Missing jewels? International spy ring? Maybe a ghost or two? Oh, stop teasing, George. Nothing as exciting as a haunting, but something a bit more serious. Someone is sending death threats to the soap star Rick Arlen. You're kidding! Don't tell Bess that. She'll want to fly out there and save him. She absolutely adores Rick Arlen. So, have you met any of those other daytime superstars? It looks like the three most popular people to accuse are Millie, Dwayne, and Rick. All right, so yes, I've met Maddie Jensen. Well, I have met Maddie Jensen. In fact, I'm staying with her. She's a friend of Aunt Eloise. Really? I like Maddie Jensen. Is she as nice in real life as she is on screen? I always heard soap stars can be a bit temperamental. She's really nice, but she's always running away. She's nice, but I never get to see her because she's so busy. So, what's new with you these days? I'm starting to train for the annual River Heights Marathon next month. But tell me more about your new case. What have you found out so far? Rick was almost killed by a falling Klieg light. Oh my gosh, is he all right? Was it an accident? He's okay, but it barely missed him. Have you searched the area? Maybe the light was sabotaged to fall. I'm officially an extra on the set, but there's not much to do. Not much to do? I bet it'd take you weeks to discover all the nooks and crannies in that studio. Who knows? Maybe you'll stumble upon some hidden passageways. TV studios are always full of them. Talk to you later. Good luck and be careful. Thanks, George. I... I like the George in this game. I think Nancy's friends are totally fine in, in, in these older games. I don't think they show up in any Taxi. games beyond this well, one, but, you know, this? I like them. 1999 Broadway, please. So, 3689 was the code. gonna go to the studio. We're gonna talk to Lillian and we are going to make our accusation. I need something to make this work. I see our Miss Snoop has shown up. Okay. All right. We've got, um, why did you ask me to come here? Why did you ask me to come here? You see, I've been doing my own investigation. And I kept on finding more and more things until, until I got a threatening letter yesterday. Can I see it? Do you still have it? Thinking of blackmail? Not if I get to you first. Ha 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 ha. Now do you believe me? Who could be doing this? You must know. Okay, so my poll for uh, who I should accuse has been running for two minutes with 103 votes. Oh my gosh. Dwayne wins with 47%. Millie with 43, and Rick with 12? Wait, no, that's not it, right? Those numbers don't add to 100. Anyway, it looks like everybody wants Dwayne. Dwayne, Dwayne barely wins this. It has to be Dwayne. Dwayne Powers? But why on earth would he... 
With his intense hatred of Rick, his doomed financial situation, and his disguise as Owen Spader, Dwayne had every motive and opportunity to commit these threats and traps. Dwayne is a very dangerous individual, ready to risk lives to accomplish his deadly campaign against Rick. Once we catch him in the act, the safer we'll all be. That is correct, Ms. Drew. And now for the bonus round. Name the washed up director and interfering actress who will be dead in a matter of minutes. Hurry up, contestants. Time's running out. It's him, up in the control room. And he's locked us in. Lillian, hide. Why, hello, Ms. Drew. I only followed Lillian here, but I've trapped both of you. Your deaths will make a wonderful end to act one. Rick Arlen's death will be the climax to this little soap opera I've produced. I'm calling it One Death to Die. <laughs> Dwayne, why? Why do you hate Rick so much? Maddie and Lillian have more reason to hate him than you do. More reason than I? Rick Arlen has to die, and I'll tell you why. Because he killed me. He killed Dwayne Powers! Whoa, what? So, you were behind this campaign of terror all along? I wish I could take credit for it all. But it was really Rick who started it. He sent the first letters, probably to drum up publicity for his failing career. And Lillian, of course, was kind enough to supply him with the tainted chocolates. You see, Ms. Drew, everyone hates Rick. I'm doing the world a service by getting rid of him. Dwayne, don't do anything you'll regret. There's still time to let us go. No! I made them stars. I did it all. And how did Rick repay me? By leaving me and destroying my business. Once he left, I lost all of my clients except for Maddie. How did you pull this off? Enough! Words, words, words! You will soon see that I am a man of action. I'll come down for the final close-up. I'm gonna write you two out of the script forever! So sorry about your short-lived career, Ms. Drew. I love the super dramatic ending. It is sort of like something you'd see on a soap opera. It's great. So I'm gonna pull the fire alarm. Open up in there! Open up! And solve this puzzle. You need to press all the buttons in the correct order, but there's no clue as to what the order is. You just have to guess it correctly. Think, Nancy. Think. Oh man, so much pressure. Oh no, I can't remember this many. Are you ready for your final close-ups? Yeah. Jeez, that's dramatic. Come on, one, two, three, four, five, five, six. I'm coming to get you, Lillian. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got it. First try. Got it on my first try, everybody. I did it. Hooray! Time's up. It's curtains for you, Miss Drew. What's going on in here? Hey, you. This is the guy we've been looking for. Congratulations, Nancy. You've solved the case. Way to go, Ralph. Forget about it. Dwayne's in the right hands now. Case closed. Dear Bess, another mystery solved. Dwayne is now awaiting trial for his attempted murder and has publicly apologized for his crimes. Lillian has moved out to California and is directing her first film. But the best news is about Maddie and Rick. They finally decided to tie the knot. Well, as Serena and Rory. But who knows? Perhaps it'll rub off on them. There's always hope. Love, Nancy. <laughs> All right. So that is the end of Nancy Drew, Stay Tuned for Danger, the second game in the Nancy Drew series. I think it's a fun game. It does have some problems, but overall, it's... It's really good. I think it's a much better game than uh, the first one. I think the third game is the best out of the first three games. So the games did get better and better as they go along. Once we reach uh, game number three, 
the games tend to be more consistent in, in terms of style. So, uh, you know, I think game number three is a real turning point. I feel like uh, with the first two games, they're still sort of figuring out how we could make a Nancy Drew mystery game, base it off a book and, and things like that. Obviously, this was their first game with uh, so many characters. They had the computer animated characters, and they had a lot of the computer animated characters. There's a lot of characters in this game, and I, I, I'm glad for that. I, I, I think that that was one of the things which worked well, even if now the characters look kind of uh, silly. Alrighty. And hey, this time they actually say who voices which character. That's helpful. That's nice. Yeah, the phone calls with the friends were a lot more useful in this game compared to the last game. There were some problems, like some of the triggers were hard to find, like those those two tapes. You saw I kind of got stuck on both of the tape things. I, I forgot to pick up the tape from the upstairs room, and a lot of people got stuck finding the tape, which is right next to the phone, which is a little hard to see. You can overlook that, especially because nothing else has really changed. I kind of wish that um, Maddie's dressing room wasn't a location in this game because there's really not much you can do there besides getting the clue about how you know the clue which was for uh, disabling the bomb I feel like they could have gotten rid of that area entirely and just had Maddie live in her home although that would have been silly to have Maddie live in her home all the time when she's supposed to be on set so often <laughs> anyway thank you for watching everybody hope you enjoyed the live stream